Deep within the desert sands of Abydos, Egypt, approximately 350 miles south of the Giza Plateau, lies a structure that continues to confound archaeologists and historians. The Osirian, officially attributed to Pharaoh Seti, the first of the 19th dynasty, circa 1290 to 1279 BCE. This enigmatic monument presents a series of architectural, logistical, and hydrological anomalies that strongly suggest a far older and potentially pre-dynastic origin. The Osirian's mysteries challenge the conventional timeline of ancient Egyptian civilization and raise profound questions about the capabilities of cultures that may have predated the pharaohs. The Osirian's design is a radical departure from the established norms of Egyptian temple architecture. Throughout the Old, Middle and New Kingdoms, Egyptian temples such as Karnak at Thebes, dedicated to Amun-Re and expanded over centuries, primarily from the Middle Kingdom onward, and the Luxor Temple, largely constructed during the New Kingdom by Amenhotep III and Ramesses II, adhered to a predominantly linear and rectangular layout. These temples typically featured pylons, hyperstyle halls, sanctuaries and courtyards, all arranged along a central axis. The Osirion, in contrast, possesses a unique L-shaped configuration, a feature not found in any other known Egyptian temple of the dynastic period. This fundamental difference in design raises critical questions about its intended purpose and the cultural context in which it was built. Was it designed for a different set of rituals? perhaps connected to a belief system distinct from the well-documented Egyptian pantheon? Furthermore, the Assyrian's construction employs colossal rose granite blocks, some weighing an estimated 100 tons. These stones were quarried in Aswan, located over 200 miles south of Abydos. While the ancient Egyptians were undeniably skilled engineers, evidenced by the construction of the pyramids, primarily during the Old Kingdom, Fourth Dynasty, the transportation and precise placement of such massive blocks, especially granite, in a location relatively far from the Nile River, presents a formidable logistical challenge. The Nile served as the primary highway of ancient Egypt, facilitating the transport of heavy materials. The Old Kingdom Egyptians, who built the Giza pyramids, primarily used limestone, which is softer and easier to quarry and work than granite. While they did use granite for specific elements, like portcullises and some sarcophagi, the scale of its use in the Assyrian is unprecedented for such an early period, according to mainstream dating. Granite, being an exceptionally hard igneous rock, requires specialized tools and techniques to shape and manipulate. While the Egyptians of the dynastic periods possessed copper tools, and later bronze, an alloy of copper and tin, becoming more common during the Middle Kingdom, the working of such large granite blocks with these tools, achieving such precision, remains a subject of intense debate. Some researchers suggest that the level of craftsmanship displayed in the Assyrian points to a technology beyond what is currently attributed to the early dynastic or even Old Kingdom Egyptians. The Assyrian is situated adjacent to the Temple of Seti I, a well-documented structure of the 19th dynasty. However, archaeological evidence, including stratigraphic analysis and the relative positioning of the structures, strongly indicates that the Osirion predates Seti's temple, potentially by centuries, if not millennia. Seti I, like many pharaohs, likely chose this location to associate his reign with the ancient sanctity of the Osirion, a practice common throughout Egyptian history. Pharaohs often built upon or near older sacred sites, drawing upon the perceived power and prestige of their predecessors and attempting to establish a continuity of divine favor. Abydos itself was a deeply significant location, associated with the cult of Osiris, the god of the afterlife, from the earliest periods of Egyptian history. The early dynastic rulers were buried at Abydos, further emphasizing the site's long-standing religious importance. One of the most striking and perplexing features of the Assyrian is the almost complete absence of Egyptian hieroglyphs and decorative artwork. This stands in stark contrast to virtually every other known Egyptian temple or tomb, which are typically adorned with inscriptions detailing religious beliefs, royal achievements, and historical events. 
Even when later pharaohs renovated older structures, they almost invariably added their own inscriptions, creating a palimpsest of historical and religious narratives. The Osirion's bare walls are a profound anomaly, offering no textual clues to its builder's purpose or the deities to whom it might have been dedicated. This absence of inscription is highly unusual, even for very early dynastic structures. The Osirian's subterranean layout is another significant deviation from standard Egyptian architectural practices. The entire structure lies approximately 15 feet below the current ground level. This has prompted some researchers to propose that the structure is considerably older than the currently accepted date, potentially predating the accumulation of sand and sediment over millennia. This hypothesis suggests a construction date in a far earlier, perhaps pre-dynastic era. Adding further weight to the argument for a much earlier date are the patterns of water erosion observed on the limestone enclosure surrounding the Osirion. These erosion patterns, characterized by deep vertical fissures and rounded edges, are inconsistent with the gradual weathering caused by wind and sand. Some researchers, including geologist Robert Schock, argue that these erosion features are indicative of prolonged exposure to heavy rainfall a climatic condition that existed in the Sahara region at the end of the last ice age, specifically during and after the Younger Dryas period 10,900 to 9,700 BCE. This timeline would place the Osirians' construction well before the rise of dynastic Egypt, aligning it with a period of significant global climate change and potentially linking it to a much earlier and largely unknown period of human history. Perhaps the most baffling aspect of the Assyrian is the persistent presence of water within the structure. Modern seismic and ground-penetrating radar surveys have revealed that the visible portion of the Assyrian is merely the uppermost level of a much larger, multi-layered complex extending at least 50 feet below the current floor. Subsurface chambers have been detected, but they remain largely unexplored due to the constant influx of water that fills the lower levels. The source of this water is a complete mystery. Despite repeated attempts to pump it out, even using powerful pumps capable of removing hundreds of gallons per minute, the water level consistently replenishes itself at an astonishing rate. Archaeologist James Westerman's extensive efforts to drain the structure have been met with persistent failure, leading him to conclude that the water is originating from within the structure itself a phenomenon that defies conventional hydrological explanations, especially in a desert environment. Westerman's team has conducted detailed chemical and isotopic analyses of the water, revealing a unique composition distinct from nearby wells and aquifers, including the Nile River. The water's isotopic profile suggests it does not originate from local precipitation or known groundwater sources. The water behaves in some ways like a geyser, exhibiting pressure and upward flow, yet there is no evidence of volcanic or geothermal activity in the area that could account for this phenomenon. Furthermore, the water inside the Osirion consistently maintains a temperature of 23.8 Celsius, significantly warmer than the water outside the structure, which measures 16.9 Celsius. This temperature differential violates the second law of thermodynamics, which dictates that heat cannot spontaneously transfer from a colder to a warmer body without external work being done. This implies the existence of an unknown heat source within the Assyrian, further deepening the mystery. Westerman's anecdotal report of improved eyesight after regularly consuming the filtered water adds another intriguing, albeit scientifically unverified, layer to the puzzle. The Osirion of Abydos presents a compelling and multifaceted challenge to the established narrative of ancient Egyptian history. Its architectural anomalies, the significant dating discrepancies suggested by multiple lines of evidence, the enigmatic and seemingly inexhaustible water source with its anomalous properties, and the complete lack of dynastic Egyptian ornamentation, all point towards a far older and more complex origin than currently acknowledged by mainstream Egyptology.